last eight days. So, Gavin, we'll, we'll come to that in a little bit. But first, let's rewind and begin. Last night, I think the story begins with 22 athletes, each pulling a night pass. I caught up um, with Damien Lacaz uh, towards the end of the evening, about 11 o'clock. He was hiking along the road from Mittersill uh, back towards Zellamse and uh, hiked along the road. Amazingly, he was being supported by Lohi Genovese, and then he began the hike up. And just after 3 a.m., he reached uh, the top of Schmittenhoer. Now, there he could have just waited until 6 o'clock and flown down, um, but he was nervous with, Patrick, uh, with Maxime Pino right on his heels. And Maxime Pino is a beast in the mountains. I actually saw him, and he walks really fast. And he didn't want to take the risk. Um, if he'd waited, the battle would then just be an aerial battle, a race, both two together, straight down to the float. Instead, uh, he decided to hike down, where the only way to reach the float in the non-flying hours was to swim. He wasn't particularly happy about it. Bear in mind, at this point, I'm wearing a down jacket. It's that cold. Uh, but eventually, he came round. He was persuaded. And it was a great scene as all the teams uh, swam out to the float. And he gave, came into official uh, second place. So congratulations to uh, Damien Lacaz. And uh, Max Pinot was, was, um, then came in third. He flew down. Gavin, quick word on his, his recovery in the last few days. Yeah, amazing recovery. You know, I thought he'd, he'd made a very similar mistake in 21 and lost the podium, and I thought he'd done the same thing again, fighting against the winds uh, last night. But he, he got on the ground and, and swept past Patrick and Pal, and just amazing performance all the way around the course. What a battle, just unbelievable. So it was, it was great. It's great to see him on the podium, and it's great to see, you know, Team France on the podium. That was, that was thrilling. Pal Takets was next, and that was really emotional, actually. I mean, of course, he, he put in a little bit of an acro on the way down, but um, he was overcome uh, with words. Um, he said, never in an event like this have I cried, and I've cried uh, many times. It's super emotional. Uh, if you have a chance, go back onto our, our Facebook Live and, and see that interview I did with him then. Patrick Von Kernel uh, came next. Amazing recovery from that six-hour penalty, Gavin. It really was. He's such an animal in the air. He's such a good pilot and just so competent in the big mountains and especially in big weather. And like Kriegel, he had just a great mindset. He had the penalty and he didn't let it worry him and he flew like a banshee. He just flew lights out and caught right back up and amazing performance. Simon Oberauner, he uh, delighted the fans, online fans, um, by drawing a heart, uh, which people were very quick to spot in the sky. And uh, when, I, when he landed, I asked him and he said, yep, it's for his, uh, his girlfriend, Anna, who was there on the float. So that was really a, a lovely moment to see. Um, that was terrific. And, uh, good. The rest of the landings are a bit of a blur, to be honest. They all came um, thick and fast. There were some wing overs and acro moves. I think um, a standout moment was um, Tim Alonji. We were all expecting some uh, crazy acro moves from him. And in the end, he just descended very quickly on a, on a stall. And it became clear why when he landed, when he just sank to his knees and, and didn't move and was simply overcome with, with emotion. His, his teammates and, and friends surrounded him and, and hugged him. And... I, I, I literally, I was choking back the tears myself, uh, watching from the sidelines. And, you know, eventually he, he, he managed to get some words out. Um, and uh, I, I asked him, he, he, what he said was, I wish I had the word for this feeling of happiness right now, which is a really beautiful mm. thing to say. Yeah, and it's a nice thing to lock up and, and throw away the key and keep forever. You know, these memories will last all of these athletes forever. I promise you that. And, you know, I think it was one another example of his solidarity with this race. He was so smart all the way through. And an acro pilot of his skill could have, you know, showed off and done a bunch of stuff. But, you know, he knows he's exhausted. You don't want to do that stuff when you're exhausted. And he just, he kept it together from start to finish. Really impressive. I, especially for a rookie. He was the first rookie in. I can't wait to see him in future editions. At one point, I had um, Arnie Verlin in our boat. Um, he's the boss of Skywalk. And he was just, we were talking, like what I was saying at the beginning, just the, the speed of this race and, and just how, how crazy it is that you've got 17 athletes all arriving on the, on the same day, a day after the leader, minutes after each other, after a 1,200-kilometer course. He said it's like a, a competition da task, you know, like on one day. Gavin, what are your thoughts there? 
uh, we, we've got to put, I don't, like Tim said, I, I don't have the words to describe this. You know, we can say exceptional and unprecedented and amazing and ridiculous, but it's, there's nothing to compare this to. I mean, typically the, the time differences between Aaron Duragati, that afternoon crowd that came in and, and Tangy and, and everybody else that came in with them all the way down to Max Loidel in 18th was, was the separation that you'd have in a 100K task in a World Cup. Uh, where you're not doing any hiking. These people, we, we, we say 1,223 kilometers for the route, but it's 2,000. I mean, they covered 2,000 kilometers in seven, eight days, and they're landing within, in some cases, seconds of one another. It's just, there are no words to describe this. It's, it's, it's impossible. How is that possible <laughs> that, that all these athletes are so close in talent and skill and preparation and mental toughness and physical toughness? It's just, it, it's amazing that this race has just completely clobbered every previous, previous edition of the Red Bull X Alps. Just unbelievable. Now, the next athlete to uh, make goal will be Mikhail Gierlach. Uh, what can you tell us about him, Gavin? Well, I, you know, he had a tough day leaving Cimatosa. He left with Rito and Nicola yesterday, and uh, it was really looking like he would get just as far as they did. And he said he took a, a bad line, went into a lot of stability, kind of a north line, and landed well short of where they all did. And it meant he couldn't get in today. He was quite sad about that when he landed down at Sexton. Uh, his lips are trashed. He's gotten a ton of sun. He's got big splits and blood in his lips, and he's in some pain. But he was really optimistic and still having fun and really excited to get in. He was hoping to get in tonight, but as you can see here, the weather is just is really changing. We've got a big change in the weather coming tomorrow and I just the, his day ran out of time. So, he's got quite a ways to go. He doesn't have another night pass, so he probably won't get there till tomorrow, but I think he was disappointed to not come in with his friends, but he's had an amazing run. Also, all eyes will naturally be on Ellie Egger at the prospect of her becoming the first female ever in Red Bull X-Alps history to make goal. And we caught up with Ellie at Sima, uh, at Sima Toes at the hut there, and this is what she had to say. Um, quite good. Finally managed to hop land here at the hut. It was quite a tricky flight today. Um, the mountains over there didn't want to let me pass, so I, had, I tried twice and then I went all the way around. So it was a demanding flight, but now I'm happy to be here. Right now we're at turn 12 at Chimatosa. Um, so it's just a few more to go. But yeah, it's still so much, so much what can happen. So tell them say it will be nice, but it's still some case to do and celebrate when it's time to celebrate. Gavin, you mentioned the weather. Can Ellie make it? She can definitely make it. She will make it, barring injury or something else. She's incredibly stoked right now. She's fully healthy. She's got a lot of energy left. Her team psyched. They're working really well together. Uh, she was thrilled to be at Cimatosa. She top landed in there while uh, the, those chasing Logan and, and James Elliott, uh, Canada and U.S., were not able to get in, so she's got a fair lead. Uh, but the weather is really going to change tomorrow. We've had pretty miraculous weather other than really tough winds this whole race. And tomorrow we're going to get pretty severe overdevelopment, potentially quite early. So she's in a perfect spot. She's way up high at the Cimatosa. She's way above the hut. So I'm sure she'll get off early. It's going to be unstable. She'll cover a lot of ground, hopefully make it to, uh, to here at the, at the Tracima before it gets too big, but then I think from there, she's gonna be pretty shut down if the forecasts are true and it'll be, it'll be another game on foot for a while. But she's got time, you know, she's got 12 days to finish. She'll definitely get in. Unfortunately, weather is also getting quite a bit tougher for those who haven't met, rounded Mont Blanc, uh, Rich Binstead and, uh, and King of Mast Alerts. So they're gonna be fighting a pretty strong Southwest headwind getting around Mont Blanc. So, as we've seen in many previous editions of the Red Bull X Alps, it's often harder for those in the back, and it hasn't been so far, but things are changing tomorrow. Thanks, Gavin. So in, in some other updates, um, Tongi Reno Good, he uh, avoided the crowds when he landed here in Selimse, and the reason for that was he injured his shoulder on takeoff. He had a, just one of those freak accidents, had a, a, an aborted takeoff. He hurt his shoulder. He was taken to hospital, um, but fortunately, nothing broken, and the doctor says it's just bruising. So hopefully, as the saying goes, Gavin, uh, pain is temporary, right? The, but the glory will live forever. 
That's right. With these uh, X Alps, these Red Bull X Alps athletes, they bounce pretty well. You know, <laughs> they're, they're all, they've done a lot of training. They're surrounded by muscle, and and Tangy's a beast. He'll be just fine. And another interesting thing that happened today was Leonard Oblock. Uh, he has been forced out of the race for hitting airspace not once, not twice, but three times. We understand, and so we're not sure if he just didn't have the right files loaded into your phone. Airspace is always uh, something that that hits athletes, but unfortunately his his were too grievous and he has uh, his his race has now come to an end unfortunately so it's going to be it's a sad goodbye to the olympian biathlete but he had a good run and i'm sure he'll correct these mistakes in the future gavin i'm going to leave you with a funny story uh that i i was talking to one of paul gushelbauer supporters um called uh, serge durant so uh you remember that day that paul uh he tagged five turn points in a day for a beginning in fiche and ending at um the col de Puddy saint bernard uh, just a crazy day so from the supporters perspective he said i drove through three countries I, ha I, I had two full fuel tanks of gas, uh, driving for 19 hours at 120 kilometers an hour. And this is an ex-fighter uh, pilot, so I think we can assume he was driving pretty hard. And he said, I still arrived two hours after Paul. <laughs> You know, I saw I saw those guys sprinting down off the Cimatosa yesterday as I was heading up. And, of course, I recognized them right away. And they didn't even have time to say hello. They are just sprinting, both of them sweating buckets. And, and I kind of went, hey, guys. And they went, hey, Gavin, see ya. <laughs> it just ran on down. So that's been the pace for all of us this whole time. It's, it's madness. It's, we can't keep up with people that are flying, you know, a modified tent. <laughs> Great stuff, Gavin. As always, it's been a pleasure. Um, with all eyes now on live tracking to see if those remaining athletes can make it to goal in time. That's, if, that's, uh, that's it from me. Good night. Good night, everybody.